Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to explore facial animation setup for your G3 characters. Now the way the G3 characters animate their faces is a little bit different, a lot different actually from previous generations. Let's take a quick look at this. I'm going to give you a teaser here first. Uh, so this, in this tutorial we're going to explore basically uh, how to customize your freeform deformation of the facial features and transformation. But let's take a quick look at using the facial puppet tool uh, just to kind of see what we're talking about here. So over here I've used this uh, Elastic Folks Mail uh, from our G3 Humans folder right here. And I'm going to go ahead into the uh, Facial Puppet tool right here. So in the Facial Puppet tool, you can choose any one of these profiles for your character. Let's just use this uh, regular uh, profile for our character and press the Space key to preview. And you can see when we move around, notice that the facial features actually morph, like the, the mouth there will morph and move around according to my mouse movements. Let's use another example, a more extreme example here, this uh, happy one. If I press space and preview, notice that I can open my mouth, it'll change the sprite, but then I can stretch this sprite, and you can see the eyes are actually stretching as well. They're actually uh, condensing a little bit. They're gonna get smaller as he gets more and more happy. And if we go down like this, he's gonna go uh, angry, and the, the sprites, the facial sprites are stretching and moving along and everything like that. Now, what you can do with the facial animation setup is you can actually determine the limits of all these facial features. So if we uh, select a couple more, say for example this angry one, you can see er, like that, the uh, teeth go this way up like that, and notice that the nose flank, the nose actually condenses a little bit as well. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later, okay? So just keep in mind that all these facial features can morph and change positions. Now if I select this button up here to clear my selection, let's take a look at something like the eyebrow. We'll just select the eyebrow by itself, for example. If I press space to preview, and I go all the way down, these are the extents, the limits, for how high and how low my eyebrow will go. If I choose uh, the nose flank as well, and I move that along with the eyebrow, you can see that's the limit for how high my nose flank will go. And we're gonna play around with that in just a moment. We're gonna play around with the limits uh, momentarily, so you'll see a little bit of a stronger uh, effect when we animate our nose flank and our eyebrows later on in, the, in this tutorial here. Let's go ahead and close this right now. We're also going to use the facial key editor in a little bit as well. But without further ado, let's go right into the composer mode because this is where we can access the facial animation setup. So first of all, we're going to go into composer here. And with our character in composer mode, we're going to load up the facial animation setup panel right here. All right, and so let's move it out of his way there. It'll zoom in on his face. Okay, so the facial animation setup, you'll see on the, on the left here, top left, there's a guide. And whichever uh, facial feature uh, movement you select, whichever uh, profile you select here, it's going to preview that on the guide right here. So this one here is where the uh, outer brow goes up. This one right here is where the brow drop inner right. You can just mouse over if you want to know what it is. Okay, this one will go down like that. And this is generally what you want to do. Okay, and there's also uh, like this eyebrow over here. There's also pupils. So this one will go to the left, for example. This one will go to the right. Uh, this one will go up. And you can preview all these as well. It'll run through the preview, up, down, large, small, left, right. It'll just run through each one of these uh, templates right here. We can do the same thing for the nose. There's only three for the nose. If we preview that, left, right, and both nostrils come up like that. So that's how you can preview. And you can select the different facial parts from this little panel up here, even the mouth and everything. Okay. So let's talk about facial feature deform first. You'll notice that below here, there's a deform and there's a transform. Now, deform will allow you to free, uh, uh, FFD, freeform deformation of your facial feature. And you can see that there's a little kind of a grid, a little mesh over top of your facial uh, sprite. So let's take a look at the uh, mouth, for example. If we select any one of these like points on the uh, facial grid here, we can move it and stretch it to wherever we like just by selecting that point. And we can hold control and select multiple points and move them all together just like this, okay? And what we want to do is we get this uh, kind of lopsided smile just like that. So we'll leave it like that. If we want to get it back to the regular position that we had before, say, for example, we mess up or like, oh, crap, where were the values before? Uh, we can just go ahead and press reset, and it'll reset it back to the original default values. Now, keep in mind, if you press clear down here, clear is a lot different. Clear is going to uh, complete, completely neutralize it. So it's going to take it right back to normal here. Uh, no uh, freeform deformation at all. But thankfully, we can also press reset again, and it'll reset it back to the default value. So clear will set it back to no morphing whatsoever, and reset will just take it back to the default value that it was when you first imported it in. Okay, so also in deform, say for example you wanted to, uh, you had a, a spatial uh, uh, expression like this, like those uh, zips, lip, lips zipped tight, okay? 
And you can see it's just like that. Now, say you wanted to make it a bit more smiley, you wanted to stretch it out a bit more. Uh, you know, instead of uh, taking both sides and kind of make, stretching them out like this, uh, let's just reset that back to normal. Instead of taking both sides and stretching them out, what you can do is you can also select mirror. And if you select mirror, then if you move one side, the other side will also move along with it. Okay. If I wanted to thin it out, I can thin it out just like this and zip those lips really tight by taking all these points and just kind of zipping them up like that. Okay. So then those lips are really zip tight. Now below the mirror option here, you have a control area. Um, the control area, if you decrease the size of the control area, basically whenever you make a movement, if you move something like this, it's going to be a lot more extreme. Okay. So when the, when the smaller, when the control area is smaller, any movement you make is going to affect the, the actual uh, facial feature, in this case, the mouth, a lot more. However, if we take, uh, let's just stretch it a bit more like that. If we take a control area and make it larger and we move this around, it's going to have less of an effect. Okay. So you need to move further to have, have the same type of effect. So the smaller control area will have a more extreme, uh, morphing. Uh, with very little movement of the control points. Whereas if the control area is larger, you'd have to move the control points further to get the equivalent effect. Okay, I'll just keep this as a lip zip tight right there. Okay, cool. Now, say for example, we went this, we had this lopsided grin on this side. Let's decrease our control area there, for example. We can also increase the strength just like this by using the increase strength or decrease strength. Okay, so this is another way you can increase or decrease the, uh, extremity of the of the morphing of your of your mouth shape or our nose shape or whatever it is um now say i wanted to uh you know um i was messing around with this one here and i stretched it out like this um we didn't just take, take a mirror off there whoops and we just uh took this right side here select like the one point and stretch it out like that and we wanted to copy this one to that side to, to this expression so we wanted it to kind of like mirror onto this side but we need to copy and paste from this expression to that expression. Well, what we can do here is we can use this copy right here. So copy, and I can use the, it'll come up with a, a thumb, or a little uh, eyedrop tool. And you select the ones you want to copy from, and it'll automatically convert to a, a bucket tool. And then you drop on the one that you want to copy it to. Okay, so now we have both of these expressions are uh, kind of smirks to the right. However, this one right here, you can see the guide says we need to smirk to the uh, to the left side of his face. So in that case, what we can do is we can actually just flip it. Okay, so we can just select flip, and that'll just flip it to the other side. That's what you can do for flip and copy. Uh, two useful little uh, tips there for those options right there. I'm just going to reset these back to normal just because we don't want to have uh, smiles that extreme. Let's take a look at the nose, for example. Let's do the same thing for the nose. So this one here, the right flank is upwards. And if you can recall, when I was using the facial puppet tool, it was about, about this level was the maximum amount of, of nostril lift that we had. If I want to make that a bit more extreme, we can do something like this. Take these points and kind of bring them up just like this. That makes an extreme lift right there. And then we can just do the same thing. Copy from here and paste over here. But then over here, we can just flip it. Okay. And then we have something like this. And we can do something for the similar thing for the eyebrows. But for the eyebrows, I'm actually going to change the transform value. So aside from deform, we also have transform. And transform will actually just change the position of the sprite on your character's face. And notice that when we select transform, all the deform settings options become disabled. So if we select the eyebrows, select transform, notice that we can have these options right here. So it'll be like that position. This one will be a bit further down. This one's a bit more towards the center. This one is uh, brow raise right, okay? And this one's brow drop right, okay? So let's mess around with these, uh, this brow raise and brow drop. So brow drop is right here. Say we wanted that drop to be a bit more extreme. Well, we can just go ahead and you know drop it down further, really close to his eye right there. And then if we select this eyebrow, notice that the drop is not going to be as close. Let's go back to transform here. It's not going to be as close to the eyeball as our right one. So if we wanted to copy that to the other side, the equivalent uh, profile on the other side, all we need to do is go to mirror options. And here we have the option to mirror by current expression or mirror all expressions. There's also mirror by angle, but that's only used for G2 plus characters, which we won't cover in this tutorial. So mirror by current expression will um, mirror this current expression, which is this eyebrow right here, eyebrow drop, to its equivalence on the other side. Uh, so let's go ahead and mirror by current expression, apply, and then we go to this side, you'll see it'll be the same thing on the other side. So like that, boom, boom, there we go. 
Now, uh, it's recommended that if you're doing this like with multiple uh, different uh, profiles here, say for example this one, uh, we want to, let's do the eye eyeballs here for example. So eyeballs, uh, this one here is to the right, say for example for some reason we wanted his eyeball to be outside of his eye socket right there, or the people to be outside of the eyeball right there, we can do that and take the top one, move it up even more extreme, and the dilate, we can just uh, stretch it out like that and make it a very, very dilated pupil. So we've, we've messed around with three separate ones. And if we want to uh, you know, copy those all to their equivalents on the right side, then we can go ahead and select mirror options and then select mirror all expressions. And that'll uh, mirror all the expressions, everything from the smile to the nose and everything like that, and just select apply. And then on the right side, there we go. We have that extreme example right there and uh, you know, pretty dilated pupils. Let's go ahead and just reset those back to normal there. Reset this one, reset here, and uh, reset this one. And then we can mirror those reset ones back. So go mirror options, mirror all expressions. And then on the right eyeball, we'll have the not so extreme examples right there. Okay, so that's how you can transform and mirror stuff. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the eyebrows again. So the eyebrow, we have the eyebrow down and the eyebrow up. Uh, let's take the eyebrow up a little bit further, maybe to something like very close to his hairline, right about there. So we want it to be a really extreme type of eyebrow. And let's mirror that to the other side as well. So mirror by current expression and mirror that to the right side here. Okay, so we have this and this right there. So we have very extreme examples. Let's do the same thing for the nose. Oh, we already did the nose there, so we, we kind of morphed the nose a little bit. Um, and this one here is the nose, uh, when both nose flanks are up like this, let's actually move this a little bit further up as well. Let's move the nose slightly up, okay? So that'll be a little bit different from before as well. So those are the mirror options for transform. All right, so so far the settings we've changed have been the eyebrows. You can see the eyebrow down is a lot further down than previously, and the eyebrow up is almost up close to the hairline. And we have that, we've mirrored it onto the left side as well. So left brow is way down like that, and up like that. We've also done it to the nose. So the nose flank, again, extreme on this side and extreme on that side. But what if, say, for example, we forgot to do this? Uh, say, for example, we took the left brow, or the, the right brow, rather, and we decided to uh, uh, restore these back to the reset value, to the normal value. So let's go back to reset. It'll go back to the original default value. Let's go to the bottom one here and select reset as well. So you can see now the eyebrows are much different for this one, up and down like that. And the left brow is up and down like this. Okay, so a lot less extreme. And the nose, for example, we can do the same thing. This side is way up. This side, we can just go ahead and press reset back to the original value. So let's just go ahead and close this down then. And I'm gonna go back into stage mode and let's try and animate this. So if I zoom in on my character's face here, I can use the facial puppet tool. Uh, one way I can do it is use the facial puppet tool. Again, if I uh, have the features selected separately, I can select the left brow and the right brow press space, and you can see the difference right there. One goes up and down a lot further than the other one as I preview. And the same thing happens with the nose flanks. So if I select whoops, both the nose flanks there, you can see this side will go up a lot further than the other side. And that's just the way it is uh, because we've uh, modified it that way in the facial animation setup. So you can do the same thing in the motion key editor, in the facial key editor as well, by going to select facial key editor. And if we had an example where we took the eyebrows, both eyebrows, clicked them all the way to the top, you can see the exact same thing happens. Okay, let's just uh, default key everything. And let's go to like frame, uh, you know, frame 35, for example, that'll do fine. And let's use the both eyebrows, let's bring them up like this. And then let's take the uh, nose flank as well, both nose flanks, and we'll just bring them up like this. And you can see the one on the, this side will actually go a little bit higher. So we've done this animation. We can just go back to like, you know, frame 70, for example, and, uh, you know, restore it back to the default key. Okay, so when we press F3 and go to the timeline into our uh, face track under uh, facial clip, we have the keyframes right here under face and start and end. Okay, so we have this animation all set up. Uh, what if, like, say, for example, we wanted to go back to the original settings? Well, even though we've already done animation, we can still go back to the original settings if we go back into facial animation setup, and it'll restore this back to the original uh, default uh, levels that we had before. So let's go ahead back to the composer mode here. And once in composer mode, I'm gonna go into the facial animation setup one more time, 
And let's go ahead and mirror these now. So we have, you know, uh, up and down like this again, just to remind you here. Let's go ahead and copy, mirror this one to the other side, mirror all expressions. And then for our nose, you can see this extreme. This was not as extreme. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and copy this one. Copy from this section to that section. And then this one, we're going to flip it. Okay, so now this one is extreme and that one's extreme. So now everything is a lot more, a lot stronger. The expressions are a lot stronger for both nose flanks and both expressions or both eyebrows. So now what's going to happen is you can see previously the eyebrow was down here, but now it's way up there. And that's because we restored, we've modified the settings. So you can go ahead and do any animation and you can modify the facial animation setup uh, settings uh, after you've done the animation and it'll restore it back to whatever uh, whatever level you wish. Okay, so after you've done your animation, you can have no problem going in and modifying them uh, a little bit later on. Uh, if we select our character now, for example, and go to the facial key editor one more time, if we go to detail settings, you can see these a little bit better. So you can see the, uh, the levels right here. So we have brow raise, brow drop rate right here. Okay, and so this slider will go to the... Uh, 100% is down here where we set it at. And brow drop left, the exact same way. Brow raise left, and take this one away, and it goes way up there, okay? So these are the limits that we set for everything. And the nose flanks as well. There's nose flank raise right, way up there, down, and nose flank raise left, and way down there. Okay, so after you've done the animation, you can also set the, uh, the level of ex extremity in this uh, face key detail settings. But for the original settings that your character is embedded with, you want to use the facial animation setup tool within the character composer mode. So that's about it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Hopefully, hopefully you learned a lot. Uh, make sure you check out our other videos at our YouTube channel and our forums at forum.relusion.com. And I'll see you in the next video.